So a central component of building agents is tool calling. And one of the biggest challenges we often see is how can we bind a large number of tools to a given agent? I'm going to show a trick for doing that. And I'm going to use this pre-built agent from a package we recently released called LangGraph Big Tool. You can see that here. We import it. And all we have to do is just pip install LangGraph Big Tool. Now I'm going to initialize this agent with Quen2514B via Olama. So it's actually going to run locally on my laptop. And I'll also pass in this tool registry, which is a list of 51 different math tools that it can use to solve math problems. Now I'm going to go ahead and ask a question and give some simple instructions. And I'll run this. Now we can look at the agent makes a tool call based upon our query, it receives some set of available tools, and then it makes a decision from these tools about what's relevant to call for this problem and gets the correct solution. So this is a locally running 14 billion parameter model that's able to make correct tool calls from a large set of 50 different math tools. So how's this working? Well, the intuition for this is actually pretty straightforward. So typically when you build agents, you just very simply take an LLM, you bind some set of tools, and you allow the LLM to think over that set of tools to perform actions or tool calls, receive the output from those actions or observations, and do this in a loop until no more tool calls are made. Now the problem with this that's come up quite a bit is the LM has to reason over this set of tools. So for small numbers of tools, this is fine. But as this tool set gets larger, it can be more confusing for the LM. Now this depends on the model you're using. This depends upon how your tools are designed. This depends on your tool definitions. But the intuition is pretty clear. You're giving the agent more cognitive load as you give it more tools. Now we have this nice little pre-built called LangGraph Big Tool, which aims to address this and uses some ideas from a number of different papers that really boil down to this. What if you can just give an agent tools on demand? So you have a separate process that retrieves the most relevant tool for the task and binds that to the agent to actually solve a problem. So instead of having the LLM reason over some very large set of tools, you have a separate search process that retrieves only relevant tools for the task. That's the big idea. So what's actually happening is we have very simply this single retrieve tools tool that the LM can call initially. Now this performs a retrieval of tools from, in this case, a vector store, but doesn't have to be. You actually can implement arbitrary search and retrieval logic for your tools. But the point is the most relevant tools for the task are retrieved based on some search. The most intuitive case, for example, is semantic similarity search on a vector store where you've indexed the tool descriptions such that you can retrieve tools that are relevant to the given task. So you can take the user input, embed it, perform semantic similarity search against tool descriptions to retrieve tools that are most relevant to what the user is asking. In this toy example, tool number two is retrieved from that process and only tool two is bound to the LM. The LM then can call tool two and then iterate back and then loop back just like we saw before. So the key difference was here, the LM has to look at the full set of tools from 1, 2 to n and determine which one is appropriate to call. In this case, the LLM's cognitive load is reduced significantly, and it's only shown relevant tools based on this search. Now, the clear benefit of this reduces the cognitive load for the agent and scalability can handle very large numbers of tools. It's simply limited by your search system. Now, an interesting question that might come up here is how to think about this versus a multi-agent architecture. So a nice way to think about this is with multi-agent, you're building a bunch of sub-agents that ideally group functions into explicit groupings. So like you might have a math sub-agent, a planning sub-agent, a hotel booking sub-agent. But usually those sub-agents have some grouped role and in turn, specific prompts. In this particular case, you don't need to do that. You can just add all your tools to a single agent and use search to service the correct ones. So a way to think about this is, if there's an underlying organization to your tools, then it may make sense to use something more like a multi-agent approach when you can very easily partition those functions into separate agents with separate system prompts. But if you don't, this big tool approach might be nice because then you can very simply have a single agent and use some search system to retrieve the correct tools for the right problem. So two different architecture for building agents, which have some interesting pros and cons. And actually they can be used together. You can have a multi-agent system where each agent uses something like big tool to retrieve its tools. Now I showed Quentu 514B and Berkeley function calling leaderboards, a really nice resource for local model function calling. 
and Quen2514B is number 30. And I use Olama to run it. So we already showed this working in a notebook and I wanna walk through in a little bit more detail. So all I had to do at the top here is pip install and I tested with OpenAI, I tested with from LangGraph Big Tool, import create agent. Now really all you need to get started here is a list of LangChain tools, okay? So in this particular example, we collected all functions from the built-in math module in Python and just did some light filtering to keep only the functions. And this right here is where we converted each function into a tool. That's all that happened. So look at an example here. Here's one of the functions. We can look at parts of the doc string. This is what it does. Great. And we can see this function just returns a tool with the name, a description. We can see this description is just pulled from the function's doc string. That's all that's happening here. So again, we just start with a list of LangChain tool and we can use this convenient function from our package to help create those. And again, we can actually just look at the code here. We can see convert positional only functions to tools is just basically perform tool creation for functions with positional only arguments. So that's the generalization what's happening with this little utility here. And then all we did was index them. So we created a dict that fires to each tool. We initialize a vector store. Now in this particular case, I use LangGraphs in memory store but you don't have to. You can initialize a vector store independently. In particular, if you look at the readme, you can see we have some instructions for retrieving tools without the LangGraph store. You can implement arbitrary logic for tool retrieval. And again, the core components here are just defining this tool registry. So what happens here is the tool descriptions are actually embedded, and we have these IDs, which are metadata on top of the embeddings. And I'll show the trace later to explain how this actually all connects. But for now, just keep in mind that what we're doing here is that we're embedding the descriptions, which can then be searched in natural language based upon the user's question in order to retrieve the most relevant tools. That's really the key point here. We initialized our agent, we pass the tool registry to our agent, so our agent also has awareness of the tool registry, which is the dict mapping from tool IDs here and the actual tools themselves. Now we ran our agent very simply passing a user request, and we can look at the trace to see precisely what happened. So we first made this call, in this case, again, chat Llama using quen2514b. This was our system prompt. Here's the user query, and perfect. So we make a tool call to our retrieve tools tool. So this retrieve tools tool is our store, which is doing similarity search, given this query against all the tool descriptions, and it returns the UUIDs, again, this was saved as metadata, for the most relevant tools. So see something that's pretty cool here. We get the tool message back and automatically will fetch the tools returned from semantic search and bind them to our models. You can see our model now has ArcCos and Cos as available tools. Those came from our retrieval step. Remember that our agent has a dictionary mapping from these IDs to the actual tools themselves, so we can very easily fetch the actual tools from the IDs returned from similarity search and go ahead and automatically bind them to our LLM. Now our LLM just has to make a decision only about these three tools available, which is a much easier decision because it's clearly able to identify that Arcos is the right tool to call and it calls that tool with the argument. That tool runs, returns the result to the agent and the agent responds directly. So you can see really quickly here in the trace how everything is working. Again, you take an input from a user in natural language. You then use that to perform semantic similarity search against a vector store, which contains all your tools. That retrieves the most relevant tools and in particular passes back the UUIDs, which then big tool goes and binds to RLM automatically. So this is kind of the idea of just fetching and binding the most relevant tools as needed on demand, and we make the correct tool call as expected. So tool selection is one of the most challenging problems with agents. Obviously, models are getting better and better at this. It may be the case that you want agents that can operate on very large numbers of tools, and that tool selection process may be something you want to remove from the agent itself. And as an example, you can have a system, in this case, like a vector store, which will surface some set of most relevant tools to task to an LLM to reduce the cognitive load and potentially improve reliability. Now we also saw what's nice about this, you can actually use lower capacity models. So this allows you to take models even running locally and give them access to very large numbers of tools such that they don't actually have to reason over this large set of tools. This system kind of helps them and serves them only the most relevant tools for given task. So it's a nice trick. 
and feel free to leave any comments or questions below. Thanks.